Let's move on to the next matchup here. And now we got the Chiefs and Washington. And this was another bar we set. We had three bars this week. We just talked about the Dolphins to a bar kind of exceeding it. Unfortunately, that interception. But then the bar that we sit on the Kansas City Chiefs this week was zero turnovers. We did not want to see any turnovers, folks. Zero turnovers. We don't even care that they won the game because they did have, I think they had three turnovers this game. I don't care that they win. I don't care that they beat Washington. I don't care they, that they put up. 31 points we're still not going to put this team in our top 10 until they can prove that they cannot turn over the ball because we see what happens when they do turn over the ball against good teams they lose against the uh, Ravens against the Bills I mean I don't care that you beat Washington Taylor Heineke is kind of disappointing us a little bit we were big buyers and big believers in Taylor Heineke going even back to, uh, to last season we really kind of liked what we saw from him in the brief uh, glimpses that we saw and then in this offseason, when the quarterback competition was between Ryan Fitzpatrick and Taylor Heineke, we were kind of, you know, polling for Taylor Heineke and kind of thought he got a, a not a fair shake in the true quarterback competition that Ron Rivera said was kind of a true quarterback competition when we really knew it really wasn't. As soon as Ryan Fitzpatrick got there, he basically won the starting job. So when, to, when Ryan Fitzpatrick went out, we were kind of excited. We got to see Taylor Heineke, and uh, this was supposed to be his kind of revenge. Hey, y'all didn't want to start me, but now... Now here I am. I'm going to be your savior and take y'all to the promised land and kind of be competitive in this division. But now they're very, very struggling offensively. The defense is still struggling as well. And that was really why the the only reason why Washington was won the division last year, even though it wasn't that many wins, and was competitive in the majority of the games last season was because of the defense. And now the defense is not even near where it was last year. And Taylor Heineke is nowhere near, you know, putting up 30 plus points a game on a consistent basis to win. So a little disappointed in Taylor Heineke, uh, but also still disappointed in this Chiefs team. So let's start with them. I mean, we get a close game going into halftime. I think Washington. Washington actually had the lead. Uh, yeah, they were up 13-10 at halftime, Washington was, and then just the offense could not do anything for the rest of the game. Where Patrick Mahomes, I mean, that's why, you know, Patrick Mahomes can have turnovers and still win the game. I mean, we saw that a couple of, well, one time this season where they uh, turned, the ball over, turned the ball over once and still won the game. And that was against the Eagles. Uh, but then, you know, it took a touchdown in every other possession to win that game against the Eagles while having that one turnover. So still a ton of turnovers right here. But then, you know, the Chiefs getting it done in the second half. You always are in the game with Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid. doesn't matter how many times you turn over the ball. You will always still be in the game. But, you know, winning the games, you know, we see the turnovers coming back and biting them in the butt. And that's why we are, we've sold the Chiefs 100% last week heading into this week. And once again, we set the bar. We wanted to see no turnovers. And once again, we have turnovers. Two interceptions by Patrick Mahomes. A fumble by Patrick Mahomes that wasn't lost. And then a fumble that was lost by Miko Harmon, their wide receiver. So let's see where these uh, turnovers came. The first interception came on the second drive of the game here for the Chiefs. And it came down inside the red zone at Washington's nine. Not really on Patrick Mahomes' fault. Just unfortunate. Tyreek Hill unfortunately could not hold on to the ball. And it kind of pops up because it hits them in the hands and it's in an interception so once again just unfortunate there and we've seen these turnovers not 100% on Patrick Mahomes. All these interceptions are not 100% on Patrick Mahomes. But it's still just the overall, um, I, how do I put it, not not 100% focused, I, I guess I would say. Um, I, not 100% focused. I guess that's how we have to put it. Um, you know, that's why, you know, if it's a wide open pitch and catch, that, that should never result into interceptions. But we're getting them. So, and it's getting down, you know, these interceptions and turnovers are down in the red zone and all that so it's truly once again red flags and luckily for the Chiefs the Washington football team did not take advantage of that first interception they go three and out after that so you know a little bit of a bail out there by the Chiefs and before we move off of this once again Tyreek Hill you know we kind of you know classify him as the best wide receiver in this league you know kind of heading into the season but all these kind of drops right here I think we've got to kind of move them down to probably maybe number two or number three I think we have to probably put Devontae Adams at number one I mean that man is truly showing out here um, over you know obviously his entire career but man oh man the man is truly showing out that last season and this season as well so uh, I think we are going to officially drop Tyreek Hill from our number one 
wide receiver uh, spot because I he fumbled this game, and I believe he also fumbled last week as well, kind of on the same scenario. So really disappointed in Tyreek Hill as well, unfortunately. All right, second uh, turnover here, a fumble, which resulted into seven points there for Washington. So cashing in on turnovers, fantastic. And then the other interception here came at the end of the half here. Um, I, but once again, at the Washington's 20-yard line in the red zone, not coming away with points, and that's why they're down three at halftime. And then in the second half, no turnovers, touchdown, 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 three straight touchdown drives down. That's what we know the Chiefs can do. But when you mix turnovers, you're not going to win against the best teams with all these turnovers, except, especially in the playoffs. The only quarterback that can do that is Tom Brady. We just saw that last season. Uh, you know, throwing you know three interceptions in the championship game, throwing multiple interceptions throughout the other playoff games, and still coming away with wins. And we know that Patrick Mahomes is not Tom Brady. We all know this. Nobody's Tom Brady besides Tom Brady himself. So, uh, you know, that's why we are concerned about the Chiefs turnovers. We're not worried about the Chiefs turnovers in a game against Washington or a game against the Lions because they're unfortunately lackluster teams. And unfortunately for the Chiefs, they're not a lackluster team. You know, back-to-back -back Super Bowl participants, one win, one loss. And now this season, you know, defending Super Bowl participants. We hold this team to a little bit of a higher standard. And obviously that's... That that makes sense. I mean, don't come at me saying we. You have to hold teams in different scenarios with different quarterbacks in different in different just kind of you know uh, scenarios. That's why you know when we talk about quarterbacks, we all don't talk about quarterbacks you know like they're Tom Brady because there's only one Tom Brady. So yes, we hold Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes to higher standard of quarterback play over you know Ryan Tannehill and Baker Mayfield and you know kind of the second and third year quarterbacks like Sam Darnold. And all of that. So, yes, we talk about quarterbacks and teams differently dependent on their situation. I don't think that's wild to do. All right, what else do we got here? So all the turnovers here by the Chiefs, three turnovers. We set a bar at zero, so we will still not be buying the Chiefs here heading into next week. And I still think we may probably leave them out of the top 10 in our power rankings uh, come on tomorrow's show. So still not buying this Chiefs team, but let's talk about some numbers here. Patrick Mahomes goes 32 of 47. Good, is that good? What do we got? We got 68%. We'll take that all day. 397 yards, absolutely fantastic. Two touchdowns. Sounds very, very good, but those two interceptions. So once again, it's just the turnovers here by the Chiefs that are truly holding us back of truly believing into this team 100%. All right, the running game, uh, Daryl Williams, 21 carries for 62 yards, two touchdowns, nothing great, three yards a carry, kind of average-ish. Patrick Mahomes, three rushes for 31 yards. Jarek McKinnon, uh, three carries for 10 yards. And who was Patrick Mahomes throwing to? We had Travis Kelsey, number leading receiver here. You know, classic here. Eight receptions for 99 yards. Tyreek Hill, nine receptions for 76 yards. And a touchdown responsible for that interception as well. Miko Harmon, four receptions, 62 yards. Brian Pringle, Five, uh, three receptions, 55 yards. Demarcus Robinson, three receptions, 46 yards, one touchdown. Daryl Williams, three receptions, 27 yards. And Jody Forston, one reception for 27 yards. So going to his main playmakers, we had Tyreek Hill, 12 targets. Travis Kelsey, 11 targets. And then the third highest targeted receiver was Demarcus Robinson at six targets. So, you know, Patrick Mahomes knows where his bread is buttered. Um, you know, for an entire game, you know, 90% of the game, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, and Tyreek Hill are all going to play flawlessly, but that 10%, that other 10% where it's turnover filled, that's where we get the losses, and that's why we are concerned with this Chiefs team. All right, let's talk about Washington now. Truly unfortunate uh, play here by Taylor Heineke for another week. This man has to get it figured out here if he wants to kind of still be competing for a starting role at the quarterback position coming up for years ahead. Because if I'm Ron Rivera, what is keeping me tied to Taylor Heineke uh, you know, in this offseason? Why not draft a quarterback, which will probably be the route? So Taylor Heineke not doing himself any favors here, and he'll probably still be on 
Deshaun Washington roster come next season, but he's going to be in a true quarterback competition, and we saw him handle this year's quarterback competition with Ryan Fitzpatrick, and obviously we all know how that ended. He did not win that one. So this was kind of a free year for Taylor Heineke to really kind of put himself into a true starting level quarterback caliber player. He's not even close to this yet, so truly unfortunate by Taylor Heineke. But he goes 24 of 39. 24 of 39, 61% completion percentage. We don't like that. 182 yards on 24 completions. That stink and dunk. One touchdown, one interception. Nothing great there on the touchdown to interception ratio. And the interception that he threw came in the fourth quarter when the game was already over. They were down 31 to 13. So the interception we can kind of erase. Uh, two minutes, three minutes left in the game. You're down double digits. That's that's a loss guaranteed. So just trying to do something a little bit too little too late here for Taylor Heineke. So definitely got to get that cleaned up. The running game here by Washington, not terrible. You know, real solid here. They had 18 rushes, 39 passes. I mean, eh, it's not bad. Maybe, you know, tone down the the throwing attempts by Taylor Heineke but you know you get down big in the second half you got to start throwing the ball a little bit more so I think I think this is a kind of very very good game uh, play calling wise for Washington it's just Taylor Heineke needs to step up big time but the leading rusher is JD McKissick eight carries for 45 yards Antonio Gibson 10 carries for 44 yards so running back by committee getting it done basically at you know 100 yards rushing so like we like to see so I mean solid rush game here Taylor Heineke starting to fall on you a little bit um and let's see who he was throwing to. We had J.D. McKissick, the leading receiver here, uh, the running back. So, once again, dink and dunk game. Uh, eight receptions for J.D. McKissick, 65 yards, and he was the most targeted receiver as well. Uh, Ricky Seals-Jones, a very, very great tight end right here. Four receptions, 58 yards. He had a touchdown. Deami Brown, three receptions, 30 yards. And then we get Terry McLaurin. I mean, why is Terry McLaurin the fourth leading receiver here? That should never be the case. Come on, Taylor Heineke. Start feeding the ball to your main personnel, your main weapons. I mean, this Chiefs offense struggled uh, the entire game and put up three turnovers in the first half and still made Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill their leading receivers here because Patrick Mahomes knows that they uh, those two are his best weapons. Come on, Taylor Heineke, star figuring that out as well. Terry McLaurin, four receptions for only 28 yards. That's not going to get it done. So Washington, another lackluster performance here offensively, uh, defensively in the second half. But, uh, you know, it's only a matter of time when you play the Chiefs. So Chiefs get the win 31-13, to and uh, we are still not buying the Chiefs, folks.